Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. Today I'm working on a set of lotto blocks that I won at a quilt club meeting years and years ago. Um, so I want to show you what I'm doing with these blocks. This set of lotto blocks um, was from uh, a quilt club meeting that I attended. It was a fundraiser for a local library and we were supposed to bring a 12 and a half inch block that had a tea party theme uh, preferably with teacups or uh, teapots so um, I brought I think I brought two or three of them and I actually got two of mine back I think I probably brought four and I got two of them back I won one of the draws I have some that are 12 by 12 and a half I have some that are 13 by 13 I have some that are 12 by 12 and um, you know everywhere in between nothing was exactly 12 and a half inches square um, the larger ones I was able to trim down and those are these here but these other ones that were more rectangular than square and none of them were 12 and a half inches on any side I'm gonna have to trim down to 12 so that means I'm gonna have to trim these down to 12 inches too in order to use them but anyway here are some of the blocks okay this one is a set of teacups and this is a pre-printed fabric that the quilter cut out and then she framed it with some floral and this is one that I did I think this is a Debbie mum pattern um, it's an applique with a stack of teacups and here's the teapot that I made and I did mine on um, some muslin we were supposed to use a white or an off-white background and you can see not not everybody stuck to the rules but that's okay we didn't have any color combination the little only rules were supposed to be 12 and a half inches square and a white or a cream colored background and then the tea party theme here's another teapot that somebody appliqued a dragonfly on I think is really cute and here's another teapot with some pretty blue and yellow which is machine appliqued it's also fused down it's fused fused fusible applique and here's another one where somebody cut a fussy cut out a tea cup and a teapot and then they made like a tablecloth or um, something to make it look like it's sitting on a shelf which is very pretty and here is another Debbie mum pattern that somebody did this is also fusible applique she did hers on white there's a, another teapot this is the same pattern as um, the blue and yellow one it's the same pattern as this one may have been from the same person I don't know this one I thought was interesting because she uh, used the back side of her fabric instead of the right side to do her teapot and this one is paper piece it's a big teacup and here's one they fussy cut out some teacups and a teapot and fused them down they aren't um, applique down machine applique but then they sewed a, a little doily in the background and uh, so this is really interesting but this one is not the right size this one is small and then here's another one with uh, they cut out a teapot out of a piece of fabric and then they framed it with two different colors this one's also too small and then here is another this one is um, partially well, actually what they did was they snowballed the, the um, block and then they hand appliqued down the, the lid and the spout and the handle and then they sewed a button on here for the top of the teapot this one's also too small so after measuring all of these and I uh, trimmed down the two two there were three of them that were too large they were 13 inches square which is actually good because there was plenty of room to trim them down so I trimmed them down to 12 and a half but then I came across these that are not the right size this one is 12 and a quarter by 12 and three quarters so 
what I'm going to have to do is just trim all of these blocks down to 12 inches square and then I can set them. Okay, here's a layout that I've come up with. I just uh, basically just started painting them up on the wall. I'm going to leave them up there for a while and look at them and uh, make any adjustments I feel I need to make. But I think I'm just going to set them with sashing and uh, put a couple borders on and I think that'll be it for this. So I have to decide the color for the sashing. Um, there really isn't anything in common other than they all have either white or cream in them. Some have, I mean there's some purple and there's uh, some have a salmon color, there's yellow, um, pink, blue, there's even some black, teal, so all different colors in there. So I'll have to come up with um, something to kind of unify them. So don't know what yet, but I'll uh, think on it some. I have been auditioning fabric for the sashing for these blocks, and I think this is what I'm going to go with. It's a reproduction fabric. It's uh, called Old Cambridge Pike. That's the line of fabric. Old Cambridge Pike Celebrating Young America by Barbara Brackman for Moda. And this particular print is number 8324 Wild Oats, 1870 to 1900. So that's the piece of fabric that was dated 18, between 1870 and 1900. So they reproduced that fabric. And I believe I'm going to go with this because most of the blocks have a little bit of green in them and um, it's not too overpowering and it's actually not too pale. I had tried a companion piece of fabric with this line that is um, a light brown, um, a creamy color and it, it just kind of faded into the background of all the blocks that have a cream colored background so it wasn't doing the job that I like sashing to do. I like sashing to frame the blocks so that the blocks show. I don't want it to blend into the blocks and make the blocks just look bigger than what they are. So I needed more contrast so I think this piece of fabric will work pretty well and then I'll use the other piece of fabric for the outer border and um, this piece here the wild oats I'll also use for the binding. So I've got two yards there that'll give me plenty for the sashing in the border and the binding. So I'll go with that. And uh, so next step is take all this down, start cutting my strips for the sashing, getting them sewn on, and then do the outer border and then cut and apply. See, I'm gonna do then do the inner border and then cut and apply the outer border. So then I'll be ready for the machine. You've got all the sashing trimmed down to the right size, um, which is 12 inches by two and a half. And I'm just going to sew these on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and this will go on to the first two blocks in each row. I've worked several hours today work, um, putting in the sashing and the borders and there is the finished quilt top 
I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. I think that green sashing was the right choice. What I had planned on using was what I've used out there in the outer border and I, that just blended in too much with the background of the blocks. So um, the green sets off the blocks and um, the outer border fabric kind of carries the background into the quilt, into the outer borders of the quilt. So um, I think it's a good choice. So um, that'll be ready to put on the machine in a day or two and I'll get quilting on that. Well this is as far as I got on the quilt this week but hopefully I'll get it on the machine in the next couple days and get some quilting done and I'll be sure to video that and show you what I'm doing with the quilting. So I hope you liked this video and if you did please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and to click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And don't forget to share this with your quilting friends. And in the meantime I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas click on the video links and to keep up with my latest projects click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.